Hey, it's Jermaine Satya from LiveWarZone.com. Today I come bearing news about fibroids, not necessarily the best of news, but it is very important news that uh, could help you and help other women in your family. So what I'm going to be talking about in this video is a study that was released about 10 months ago. And this was really the first study that showed exactly how a particular ingredient that we are all exposed to, how that ingredient drives the growth of fibroids, okay? This ingredient I'm gonna talk about is called phthalates. Now you have probably heard about phthalates. If you buy any kind of skincare products, a lot of times you will notice that a lot of them will have a label on there saying uh, free of phthalates. Even household products like cleaning products will also have that label because more and more people are becoming aware that phthalates um, really are a problem. Now, phthalates are a, they are plasticizers. So they are basically used to make other materials more elastic and kind of more plastic like. But the other thing about uh, phthalates that has always been known is that they are endocrine disruptors. So phthalates as a whole, because there's lots of different ones, but phthalates as a family of compounds, it is known that they disrupt hormones, okay? Now that study was conducted by Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine, okay? And I'm just going to read you a couple of statements that I pulled out of uh, the article that they published on their website uh, when the results were actually available for the study. So the first thing that they said in, this, uh, in the article was, for the first time, scientists at Northwestern Medicine have demonstrated a causal link between environmental phthalates and the increased growth of uterine fibroids. The study also goes on, to, the article also goes on to say that prior uh, epidemiological studies have consistently indicated an association between phthalate exposure and uterine fibroid growth. But this study explains the mechanisms behind that link. The scientists discovered exposure to DEHP, which is the most widely used phthalate, Exposure to DEHP may activate a hormonal pathway that activates an environmentally responsive receptor to bind to DNA and cause increased growth of fibroid tumors. So those are the two key things uh, that I just want you to remember from this. I will put a link to the actual study itself, okay, if you really want to dive into the details of it. But those two statements were in the summary uh, statement that was on Northwestern University's website. Now, let's talk a little bit more about phthalates. So phthalates are everywhere, and I do mean everywhere. So one thing I would just say right off the bat is if you're thinking, well, all I have to do is just avoid phthalates and I'll be good, you really can't avoid phthalates. You literally have to live in a bubble and preferably not a plastic or vinyl type bubble to avoid phthalates, okay? Because they are everywhere. Phthalates are found in, I have a whole list here of just some of the things. You can find it on the outer coating of medication, uh, food packaging, hair products, makeup, nail polish, paint, fragrance, soap, shampoo, deodorant, lotion, air freshener, plastic key rings, vinyl shower curtains, phthalates are used everywhere, okay? Uh, the other thing with phthalates is that they affect the endocrine system and can manifest in the form of things of fertility issues, which I mentioned before, early puberty, uh, diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular problems, respiratory problems. All of those are correlated to and associated in one way or another to exposure to phthalates, okay? So these things are, you know, they're major. Like this is not something that we can necessarily take lightly. Now, there are a couple of special uh, things that you really want to keep in mind and basically have as your key takeaways from this video. So the first thing about phthalates is that manufacturers are not required uh, to list them separately on products, okay? So if we're talking about, let's say your shampoo, they're not required to list it separately. So oftentimes uh, what you see listed as fragrance or perfume or parfum, that is going to encapsulate phthalates also. You, you really won't find it listed on its own. Uh, another statement that I found was that 
Phthalates from cosmetic products can be absorbed by the skin or inhaled, and they have been shown to have estrogenic effects in cell models and experimental animals. Something else that I want you to keep in mind is that um, the use of relaxers increases the risk of fibroids by about 17%. This is going to be, uh, that statistic is going to be really important for any of the Black women that are watching this video. And now, that information actually came out of a very old study called the Black Women's Health Study. That uh, study was done between 1997 in 2009, they followed 2003, I'm sorry, they followed 23,580 premenopausal Black women in the U.S. and they were evaluating different aspects of health throughout that study. Again, this was from 1997 to 2009 with 23,000 plus women. Very major study, had never heard about it for whatever reason, okay? So that is where uh, that increase, the, the, they said the increased risk of uh, developing fibroids. If you use relaxers, you have a 17% increased risk. Now that's just from one thing. We were not, we've not even talked about all of the other toxins that are out there. That's just from relaxers alone. 17% higher risk is quite significant in my opinion, okay? So the thing with uh, relaxers is that they can contain phthalates. And about one quarter of Black women aged 18 to 30 have fibroids, compared to only 6% of white women in that same age group. Now, once you switch over to age 35, that number increases to 60%. So let me say that again. Uh, one quarter, 25% of Black women aged 18 to 30 have fibroids. By age 35, that number increases to 60%. So it's a huge jump. And Black women are two to three times more likely to have recurring fibroids or to suffer from fibroid-related complications, okay? So why is it that, you know, why Black women struggle so much more with fibroids? Well, there's a lot of different things. There is definitely a lot of just looking at the stressful environment. There is also just the fact that it has been shown that products that are marketed primarily to Black women tend to be more toxic. And there's also some research showing that we generally, as a group, tend to use more skincare products. So it's just like this, you know, you just stack so many things that ultimately work against us and to help explain why there is that propensity to have uh, fibroids so much more than other groups, okay? So, like I said, none of this was good news, but I did want to really present this to you because there is a lot to chew on here. There's a lot of things to consider. And the main thing that I want you to remember is that out of all this, even though it's not great that, you know, companies don't have to reveal exactly where the phthalate is in their ingredient list, the silver lining here is you actually have the ability to make changes, to make choices, I should say, that will ultimately uh, help you when it comes to preventing fibroids, or at least lowering your risk, like I said, of either getting them initially or having them reoccur. okay? So let's talk a little bit about what some of those things are because um, I do not want you to take this as something where you have to panic. You can't avoid all toxins, but the thing with toxins is there's two aspects to it. There is the aspect of how much of it are you exposed to and also how healthy is your body because your body is capable of eliminating those things from your system. And if they are eliminated and they don't get the chance to pile up, then that works to your advantage. But you've got to work both angles. So the first thing that you really want to start considering is you want to clean up your, your beauty routine, you want to clean up the feminine care products that you use as much as you can. Now, this is not a light task, especially if you are someone who uses a lot of uh, personal care products. It might take you a while, um, but it's well worth it because just by using cleaner products, 
you reduce your exposure, not just to phthalates, because there's lots of other endocrine disruptors out there, right? So the problem that we're facing is that there are so many things coming at us that are messing with our hormones. So this is going to help you not just with reducing exposure to phthalates, reducing exposure to other endocrine disruptors as well. So you really want to take it seriously and start thinking about how you can work on switching to cleaner products, okay? This is something that I have gone through uh, many years ago and it took me a while to go through it. So I have learned a lot of what to do and not to do. And I can definitely make you know some more content around this if you want guidance on like where to start because you've got your, you know, you've got everything, your moisturizer, your shampoo, your makeup, like you could start anywhere, even your tampons, like there's so much that you could do. If you wanna get a water filter, like there's a lot of different things that you can start to do to reduce your exposure to toxins. You don't have to get it better. I mean, you don't have to get it perfect. You just need to do better, all right? So if you want me to make some content around like, you know, how to get started with this cleanup process and some other brands that I personally like, I'm happy to do that. Leave a comment below. The second thing is you wanna support your detox pathways. That means you wanna support your lymphatic system. You want to support your liver. You want to support your gut. Those three things are going to be essential for making sure that whatever toxins you're exposed to, whether because you ingested it or you inhaled it or because you applied it to your skin and made its way into your bloodstream, however it got into your system, you want your gut, your liver, and your lymphatic system to be in good health so that they can do the work that is necessary to get that stuff out of your system. I have videos where I talk about all three of those systems and how to support them. So I'm going to link to those videos in the description section. Take some time to watch them and start laying out a plan for yourself, okay? Then the last thing is food, right? So you really must nourish your body with whole foods because when you're thinking about, you know, something like exposure to phthalates or other toxins, what that can lead to is basically inflammation. You kind of just want to think of inflammation as like there's a sort of a like a fire going on. It's an emergency situation. And in order to fight that fire, you need nutrients. You've got to eat whole foods to get the nutrients. The nutrients are the the you know sort of the fuel that your body uses to do everything that it needs to do to make sure that these things don't become harmful in your body, okay? So you've got to work on getting more whole foods into your daily routine. I've also got some videos where I talk about foods to eat. I have a video where I have my top five foods just to give you an idea of things to get started with. So I'll make sure to link to that. But that's really uh, sort of your three-step process for, for when it comes to uh, preventing something like fibroids as best as you can, because I'm not saying that this is a foolproof, you know, if you do this, you never get fibroids. That's not what I'm saying. But we want to reduce our risk, okay? So you want to clean up your products, you want to support your detox pathways, and then you want to start eating a whole lot more whole foods, okay? So that's it for this video. Uh, I hope that this information was helpful, and I hope that this has given you uh, maybe a little bit more understanding of just some of the stuff that's out there and what we're really dealing with um, when it comes to toxins. Because it's like I said, phthalates are literally everywhere. I didn't even talk about like your car seat, uh, for example. I believe that also like just ev they're everywhere. So we can't we can't avoid them 100%, but we can reduce our exposure. And then we can make sure that the body is prepared for when it is exposed to get it out of your system safely so that it doesn't stay in there and pile up and accumulate and do God knows what to your organs. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, we would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and be sure to share this with anybody else that would benefit from this information. If you have any questions, any comments, any thoughts on all of this, leave me a comment. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about this. So on that note, thank you. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.